Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK. We're out foraging again. It's the 13th of March. Uh, we're in Shropshire and uh, we found some very interesting plants to talk about. First of all, one that I've uh, done a video on already. This lovely plant here. And this is hogweed, common hogweed, Heraclium swandilium. Uh, which is a native species and one that us foragers absolutely love and what I want you to note on those leaves if you can I'm not sure the camera is good enough, but it should be able to pick up some fine downy white hairs on those leaves now note the shape of the leaves as well This is common hogweed and this little fella here. These are the shoots that we love to pick in spring now right beside it there's a very well-known dangerous plant. This is young giant hogweed. If you like to zoom back a little bit, you'll see that the leaves have got a bit more of a, a sort of sycamore or maple shaped young initial leaf. And those leaves don't have quite the same fine downy hairs. They are still a little bit hairy, ever so slightly, but nothing like as hairy as the common hogweed, the plant that we like so much. You can also probably hear in the background, there's a running uh, stream of fresh water. This giant hogweed, that's what this is, young giant hogweed, generally only grows beside streams of fresh running water. So over here, we'll show you the plant a little bit more mature. Watch. Uh, where you tread there Eric there's lots of it around and then we've got a fence to deal with and over here whoa, we've got some much more mature giant hogweed and very interestingly here last year's stem you can see that that is about maybe two and a half inches in diameter even after dried and this one over here is still standing. I'm not particularly tall, but you can see this uh, makes me look very, very short. Um, giant hogweed can get to nearly four meters tall, or even more actually, I've seen it probably more than four meters tall. Um, and this giant stem indicates again that we've got giant hogweed here. This is a video to help you identify giant hogweed when it's young because for me that's the only time you can really mistake it for, for common hogweed um, when it's first coming up. So if we look down here we've got more of these sycamore type leaves growing randomly around. That's the very young giant hogweed. I wouldn't really ever mistake that for common hogweed to be honest. Then the plant will mature a bit more and we've got in its second stage of growth here with big shade leaves and a shoot, a bit like the shoot I was showing you on the other common hogweed, but much bigger. And then over here, I'm gonna be very careful not to touch the plant, and I'll explain why in a second. I'll just use my hand there, uh, my, my jumper to protect myself. But on the stem there, you can see those hairs, and you can see the red spots. Those red spots you don't really get on common hogweed. And then, as the leaves mature, you can see they're much spikier than common hogweed. If you can zoom in just on the edges there, don't get too close. <laughs> but the edges are much spikier. And again, the leaves are much more hairless, much shinier. Um, it looks like a cross between Rhubarb and gunnera, if you know what gunnera looks like, it's a fantastic looking leaf, it's giant. Um, and rhubarb, obviously, you can see the similarities here between this and rhubarb. Now, I wouldn't have any problem touching gunnera. Uh, rhubarb, I'll happily eat. Common hogweed, I'll happily eat. But this plant is one that I will not even touch with bare skin. I think I probably took a bit of a risk just using my sleeve to protect myself there because this plant is full of uh, what are called furocoumarins and uh, those furocoumarins are uh, something that um, messes with the way that your skin produces melanin so they reduce uh, the uh, resistance your skin has to, to UV radiation or sunlight okay so if you get those hairs or particularly the sap of this plant on your skin 
Uh, those furacumarins will remove all of your protection from UV light and in the sunshine your skin will burn severely. We're talking about third degree burns, hospitalisation with blisters that I've seen in photos coming out from the hand for about an inch. This is a dangerous plant. It's on DEFRA's hit list. We want rid of it in Britain. Um, it was originally brought over by the Victorians because it grows so huge and it looks so amazing. Um, but those furocumarins are, are dangerous. It gives it what's called phytophototoxicity. Um, now, the burns that you get from this plant in your first year are bad enough, but the sap from this plant actually changes the way that your skin produces melanin for anything up to seven years afterwards. So the same patch of skin that you burn one year from giant hogweed, you can burn uh, in the same place for anything up to seven years. Obviously, it will reduce over time. But therefore, this is a very dangerous plant and one that if you see, you should report to DEFRA so that they can remove it safely. Anyway, that's giant hogweed. Don't mistake it for uh, wild rhubarb or uh, common hogweed. Uh, those plants are completely different if you study them closely. So, giant hogweed. A lovely plant to look at, but certainly don't touch. If you would like to find out more about these plants and the mushrooms that we love to go foraging for so much, then please go to www.wildfooduk.com.